control, I would say, is maybe this is as difficult to maintain. Not only difficult, I think it's almost impossible to maintain. So even though, and hmm. so I'll kind of try to illustrate this. So we have these things, so we could say there's legitimate and shadow systems. And so here again, I'm a really smart guy, right? And so I um, create this system. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be very efficient, and it duplicates, right? And everybody gets trained, and everybody knows what they're supposed work. to do, and it keeps doing it, and keeps doing it, and keeps doing it, and we're really efficient. But what happens? Well, mm -hmm. these shadow things start to happen, right? People start meeting at lunch and talking, or someone was on vacation and missed the training, mm -hmm. or... And so these kind of more... Sh so there's the formal system that's occurring, but underneath it, all there's of these... No incidental interactions start happening that affect the result of the, the formalized system. So mm -hmm. all of my policies, the fact that I have my policy book on my thing, I had a, there was a person that worked for us and she thought it was really important that not only did I give you the policy, but that you had to sign the policy. So mm -hmm. that you were sure that you read it. And so that means you knew exactly what you were supposed to do every time. Oh, so it's like a contract. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> this is the contract, right? Right, yeah, right, right. yeah the so, formal. But all of this happens. You can't stop that from happening, right? Yeah, you can't yeah, stop yeah. incidental interaction from happening. And what happens is, is then people learn how to do stuff, right? So what did I do? So I asked a couple of research questions. I said, what incidental learning elements do employees used to complete work tasks. So I went out and I, and these are the, these are the two themes that emerged out for this question. Mm -hmm. And so the first one I called incidental learning. Now this isn't particularly, you know, mind blowing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so people got into their job, uh, they, did, they were trained, they were irritated, but almost instantly uncertainty and doubt ensued. And so I was talking to this one scheduler, and I said, so how was your training? She goes, oh, that was great, the people were great. You know, it was almost three weeks. At first I watched, and then they put me on the phone, and they sat behind me, and I was able to do everything. Mm -hmm. And then I was going along, and I said, so then what happened when they all went away? She goes, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it was like I was never trained. <laughs> <laughs> all these phone calls came in, and I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I said, well, so then what did you do? I asked questions. And to a person, of the, every 21 people, they all answered this in their respective way the same. Mm -hmm. They asked anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. first they turned to their peers generally. If there was a, two of you guys were doing the same job, you turned to your peer, asked them for help. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they weren't there, if you were on vacation, if you were sick, if something was gone, they'd ask anybody who walked by. Right? And so, it, because they were trying to grasp for help, they were looking to complete the task that they are prescribed to do because we created a job description that said this is what they were supposed yeah. to do, right? Mm -hmm. And it didn't really matter, I mean, so the reliability of the information wasn't even considered. They just mm -hmm. were trying to get their work done. And even, even if there was potential future negative feedback, what if their supervisor, they didn't want to go to their supervisor generally, right? If it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they just tried to do it. And mm -hmm. so then, with all these transactions occurring, you can see how errors would start to occur. Right, yeah. Because what would happen? Well, the, the learning would be very varied. And there's a, all sorts of <laughs> different answers, because if you ask someone, maybe if a nurse was walking by who hadn't even been trained on this, but said, oh, yeah, well, I know how to do that. Yeah. And so they'd give advice, and they'd say, great, and then it would work. And then so what would happen? Well, then they'd learn how to do it maybe wrong. And then over time, what would happen is, is then, you would start doing it wrong, and then the new person would come into the job, and when they had the question, they'd turn to you, and you'd say, oh, yeah, this is how it gets done. And then so now it's, it's off, right? And now we've created down this unanticipated path just because of our incidental learning and, and how we interact. And so, you know, so this stuff is, there's ambiguity, and, and hmm. there's deficiencies in the feedback because you don't always get feedback, and and you know, the intensity of the interaction. So, I mean, depending upon what happened, sometimes that would, learning would kind of solidify quicker or less so, but it depended upon mm -hmm. how thing was happening. And because it's so tacit, it's really hard to know what exactly people are learning. Because just because they read the policy, and let's just pretend they even signed the piece of paper, 
that doesn't mean they memorized it and remember mm -hmm. because in six months they're still dealing with things that the, that the, that the, that the policy couldn't have anticipated, mm -hmm. right? Um, the second area, probably a little bit less so, but was also was collaboration. So participants would come together as small groups and they would, you know, they, they, they would realize that several people would start asking kind of similar questions sure. and then they would on an ad hoc basis all of a sudden come together and you know, hey, we're all having the same problem, let's figure out how to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, um, you know, they would just be learning in the moment, they would kind of hit this tipping point where, gosh, this is a problem, we need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And um, the, um, but, and then, but sometimes, because of the collaborative incidental learning, the actual formalized, legitimate system would change because there'd be enough people where they'd go to the boss and they'd say, you know, I know you guys figured it out this way, but we've really found that this is a better way, mm -hmm. and, the, and the supervisor would admit to it and then, mm -hmm. you know, go on. The second research question, you know, was really, so those were things that, you know, um, what was happening, and then this one was more like, so what, what was transpiring within this formalized system that influenced the learning? And really, um, the big one was this power element. And really the power, the way the, pow the power was exerted in this environment uh, was this expert power, um, where, where people felt, and it was based in the level of education. So clearly there's this hierarchy of education in the clinical environment. Physicians mm -hmm. have lots of education, mm -hmm. advanced first practitioners, even within nurses there's different levels of education. And then there's all the rest of the folks. Mm -hmm. But even some of the folks down here at the bottom, they they maybe have bachelor's degrees, some of them, they, a couple of them even have master's degrees, but because it was this clinical environment, the mm -hmm. level of clinical education really trumped everything. And so what did this power do? In almost every single case, the less formal, less formally educated participants conceded and altered their behavior um, based upon this kind of hierarchy of education. So it didn't matter um, that the nurse or the physician hasn't been trained in, or doesn't even maybe understand the workflow of, the, of one of these other workers. Mm -hmm. If they asked them a question, or if they came and said, change what you do, every, the people just did it, oh. right? And mm -hmm. so they, so regard, they didn't go to the supervisor who created the system and kind of yeah. have a collaboration about it. They just said, no, don't do it that way then. And I'll show you an example how that's this, uh, one of the things that came out. And so the power influenced how, because it was, it wasn't, it was, and it wasn't some sort of formalized thing, right? I mean, you, the, 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 the nurse would just come up and say, hey, you know, don't do it that way, do it differently. Mm -hmm. And then they, so it was very incidental. And so then they would change, and then what would happen is then you guys would interact and say, you know, they just told me to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And you'd go, well, but that's not the way we were told. And they'd say, yeah, but they said, mm -hmm. and then they would change, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and so yeah. it would continue to happen. The one area where this was a little was was inverse on this was um, so we have lots of uh, Hispanic Spanish speaking patients mm -hmm. and so in some cases right if we didn't have I mean the provider doesn't the physician doesn't speak Spanish and so even though the physician is at the highest level of the of the kind of hierarchy of education and power if people defer to him, in this case, he didn't have the power because mm -hmm. he didn't have the knowledge because he couldn't speak the other language. And so sometimes, depending upon the mix of people that particular day, there would be, um, there might even be a front desk person who was a high school graduate, but she was speaking Spanish. And so all of a sudden, she would be in this position of power mm -hmm. because the physician couldn't speak to the patient. And so he had to go through her, so it was kind of this, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the power thing kind of got flipped on its head a little bit. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was really unanticipated that came out was the whole learning environment. So each of these clinics was their own space, own leadership, own communication style, et cetera. And so, you know, I mean, this is probably an area that needs to be investigated further.